So. Do, 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 do. Well, welcome everybody to the session here. My name is Herbert Midgley. I uh, been a big technology fan for uh, my whole life. So I've been using these gizmos going back to, you'll see some pictures of a Commodore 64 in there. So it tells you how far back I've been using technology and whatnot. And I brought about 1% of my uh, gadgets today. So this, that's what I could fit in a backpack to come over here. So I have a lot more gadgets and I've been uh, making a video content uh, before YouTube was actually purchased by Google. And before that I used Google video. And uh, I think I have over 6,000 videos on the internet on YouTube. So um, I make a video daily and experimented with TikTok and some of the other ones that uh, have, have definitely exploded over the, over the uh, frames and, and whatnot. So hopefully you're in the right session. If not, there's the title of it. And hopefully if you're in the wrong session, you, you wanna stay here and whatnot. And right off the bat here, yes. A little, a little more, here we go. How, how about now, is that better? How about now, better? Okay, all righty. And this feels weird. I almost got like a little bit of a Doppler effect going on. What's going on? Oh, no, no. Anyways, that's cool. Well, thank you all. Thank you for letting me know. And if I need to turn it up again, just let me know as well. So welcome again uh, to become a content creator. And, and uh, one of the big things that I realized when we're diving into this subject is that I've been making content. I've been a content creator for, for years, even before the, the traditional internet in a lot of aspects, I was making content. Just it was a lot harder to get things uh, distributed and whatnot. I remember uh, having a VHS uh, camcorder and making my own little videos. And I guess distribution was take another camcorder, make a copy of it and give it to your friends. So it took a little longer. And I've been making music same way. I'd record something on a cassette and then Make, a, make another cassette, make another cassette. So it took a lot longer to uh, get things out. So um, first off, I wanna thank uh, Stephen Paulson for uh, uh, giving me some funding to come out here to TMA. And uh, I've been teaching there since 1999. So it's been a long, um, it's amazing how fast time flies by. So I'm, I'm really thankful for that. So in all the aspects, I, all of you are probably content creators. And because of this little box that we carry around all the time, you can do video on this thing. You take photos on it. It's a, it's a recorder. It's really amazing. Um, I mentioned a minute ago earlier that I've been making uh, uh, videos uh, since before uh, Google bought um, a YouTube. Well, when I made a video back then, I had to get a camcorder with tape, hook it up via Firewire into iMovie in, in real time. So it took two hours to, to shoot the, the content, took me two hours to upload it, and then edit it then render it down, then upload it. And about a week, week and a half later, it got on the internet. And there were some times with Google video, it would take two weeks for something to get on. And I, sometimes it happened like in a day or two, so I didn't know what happened. Actually, I was at TMEA and I heard something about this new uh, website called YouTube. I thought, oh, let's try it out. And I thought, huh, it, it, it actually went up that day. Like six hours later, a video was online. I'm thinking, this is fantastic. This is great. I can put stuff in, like, people could see it that day. Anyway, so it's gotten slightly faster. And now we can go around with selfie sticks and all this, the, uh, basically our own little studios ourselves and, our, and whatnot. But you, you know, the idea of, of we're all musicians and we're making music and, and cause for photos, because honestly, if you don't uh, take a photo, it didn't exist, right? You know, so we all kind of know that today. So, you know, when you go out there and uh, do a little selfie, like here, everybody, there's everybody out there. Hi, everybody. I actually, I actually presented a team A. So now they actually existed. <laughs> throw that on Instagram, throw that on wherever I'm gonna put it at. Uh, if I can understand uh, Snapchat better, I could, I could use that as well, but we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, videos, of course, blogs, writing, posts, uh, web pages. And I think one thing that a, a lot of uh, people kind of think about the young people today don't read a lot. I, 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 I think they read a lot. They just read stuff on their, on their phones and they read content that they really care about. And one, one of the things I, I strive as an educator is to find methods of the material that I'm covering to make it relevant, make it really interesting for students to want to follow. And I, I think when we are today with all this technology, whatever we want to learn, we become experts. A lot of this stuff, honestly, I have learned online also. A lot of the sound equipment, a lot of the filming, a lot of the lights, 
um, editing things. And whenever I don't know something, I go look it up. Any of you all know what a script kitty is? Any, any programmers out there, hackers? Not really. The script kitty is someone that finds a script and then they, 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 they run it, but they didn't program it. So like for me, or After Effects, I don't know how to use After Effects, but I know how to look up something and then just follow the recipe and then I can do that, uh, that event in, in After Effects. I have friends that are excellent at, at After Effects. They can just make stuff up on the spot. They're like geniuses with After Effects. Um, web pages, course books. And one of the big things that happened uh, uh, last few years, last five, six years, the open educational resources. And, and that's been really uh, interesting to come up with textbooks that you can put out and have it open. Basically, anybody can download those PDF files. They can print them up. And textbooks have gotten to be a lot more economical. So here's a couple of examples of some of the, my creativity. Uh, this fire hydrant is right next to my uh, office. And the reason why I use that fire hydrant, a lot of times I use manual lenses. So I need something in focus. So when I go in front of it, then, then so I use that, that as a focus point. And uh, this is a short film that I filmed last October, uh, sorry, sorry, last August to October. And then the pandemic kind of came more and then uh, edited over the, over a Christmas holiday. So um, I've been making films for, for a while as well. So I know a lot about bites. And I was doing, basically I was doing all these things. I, I was making all this content. And I think a lot of you, uh, you have permission to use the content you make and share it with the world and share it with your students. And I think that's a really an important uh, aspect to think about as well. So um, the idea of these generations, I think is really fascinating uh, to look at. And uh, you know, most of us are probably in this area over here. Um, and if we look at the dates here, I, I pulled this off uh, a couple of days ago to make sure it's pretty accurate. So um, I, I fall in this area here. So I'm in Gen X, I guess. We have a lot of millennials rights. And then now we're starting to get the Gen Zs also, um, depending if you teach uh, in higher education or K, uh, K to 12 uh, levels. Um, going over here, this is kind of my father's um, and then going back here, actually, this is like my grandpa's uh, areas over here. So depending on where we're at. And even today, uh, you know, my father, he loves the Internet. He, uh, he was a music, you know, just loved music. And I asked him one time, what was the biggest uh, technology he had? And he said, transistor radio. That way he'd walk out of the house and go listen to whatever music he wanted to do. And it was portable. Um, I asked my granny uh, the same thing. She said, uh, paper towels. <laughs> she apparently watched, watched so many rags in her life that once paper towels came around, she loved that anyway. So that was, I didn't, wasn't expected that. You know, if you ask uh, uh, my generation, we might probably say the internet, maybe the cell phones or computer. I remember getting the first eight bit computers. That was such a big deal. I actually had a computer in my room. Um, and now, you know, these computers here that we carry around basically are so much more powerful than anything else as well. Uh, this is a couple of years old, uh, but they kind of show that that first slide of all the different ones. I think there's like it's actually like nine years off or eight years off, something like that. But you kind of see some of the different names and it's kind of hard to keep track. Um, but regardless, whatever you want to name the generation is, I feel students want to learn. They want structure. They want to be able to uh, have things they care about and they, and they want to be educated. And so I think it's really easy to just count, hey, they're always on their phones. Now, I'm not going to you know, you know, say it's not true. I, when I teach, this is one thing that I fight a lot of, uh, the, the cell phones. When I play live, same thing. I'm singing one of my whiny emo songs. I've got to compete with you on whatever, TikTok or whatever. It's tough. Um, and I'm sure you all uh, face the same thing as well uh, in a lot of aspects. So there's, there is actually a picture of me almost when I got hired uh, there. I know. And that computer there is a performer, I think 7,600. That was the first computer that I could actually put notes in that actually kept up with me, uh, notation-wise. And I thought, that I will never need a computer any better than that. That computer there is the fastest computer I've ever had. You know, and I think, oh, golly, what was it? Two, I don't even remember, it was 230 megahertz. I can't remember what it was, but uh, at, at the time, it was very, very small. But this generation here, you know, won't buy a CD. The idea of uh, paying for a song, what's a DVD? Uh, you know, the bookstores or record stores or video stores, if they go there, it's something nostalgic, you know, kind of like how the LPs are kind of a, this, this retro thing that happens. Um, the idea of written DVDs or, you know, I guess Redbox is still around, but that's 
that's going away. The idea of going home and watching that television show at a specific time. We all binge series so much now. I used to run home, um, you know, watch the A team on Friday nights, and then during band, I had to like no, I had to wait for it to come back on and rerun because there was you know band going on. And then finally, we get a VCR. We actually had a Betamax. If any of you remember that. I know. And I also like the idea of using a phone as a phone. That's gone. And, and I don't know, the idea of going to a movie theater, you know, it's, it's less and less. Um, I, think that, I think the pandemic in some ways did that again. I saw an ad on, a, I saw like a, someone made a meme of this Radio Shack ad, and they showed all these, these products. And they said, all this stuff you, you can do on your phone. So this is like for 1985 or whatever it was. So I thought I'd get a lot of this technology and put it in a photo. And yeah, all that's all these things here, you know, calculators, music, and phones, and speaking spells, and recorders, uh, camcorders, um, all that, all, all what we can use on a phone. So the idea of learning online, Wikipedia, I love Wikipedia. Any of y'all enjoy Wikipedia? I think in a lot of ways, that always that a lot of the folks say, well, it's not anybody can change it. Yeah, but if you change it, it's they'll put it back to where, where it's supposed to be. If someone's watching that, if you change Jimi Hendrix's uh, birth date or whatever, it's gonna be changed back within a second. It's, 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 it's instantaneous uh, information. And uh, you know, one reason I don't even use a, use a textbook to teach anymore because of Wikipedia. Um, I teach history of rock and roll as one of the classes and you can learn way more about Jimi Hendrix or any song on a Wikipedia page than any book that's current um, or, because of this takes time to put on there. The idea of uh, online classes, and actually I'm using Zoom here, and this is something I didn't use uh, before the pandemic. Uh, a lot of us, I think uh, we had uh, two weeks that we were gonna be locked down, and then it became the rest of the semester. Um, and I actually use it a lot for a, a lot of things. I'm actually uh, recording this right now. And here's a tip, if any of y'all use PowerPoint, what I do is I make a PDF file and I put it in a web browser. That way I can go back and forth between videos or whatever I'm trying to do. And I don't have to go back and forth for switching from things. And unless you have a, 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 an interactive PDF, I mean, a PowerPoint and whatnot. So online classes, I think have become even more and more. I'm, I'm actually taking classes right now online uh, as, as well. And TikTok has really been fascinating as well uh, to dive in. Any of y'all experiment around with TikTok? I know some of the young folks would. Any of y'all are like afraid? Oh no, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. and And... At first, I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't get it either. Uh, but at some point, it starts understanding what you're looking for. So I look for a lot of language stuff, uh, music stuff, how to be an independent uh, musician. And at some point, it understands that fudgy, uh, that logic comes in and that's what it gives me. Um, and uh, it's been interesting. I had, uh, I'll share one. I, will, uh, I was just trying to experiment with videos. And I have this, I have this uh, 2002 uh, Honda Accord. I bit the key. And I have a little transponder from another key. And I was saying, well, how you can, if you bit your key, you can still use a, a, your spare key. I always carry a spare key in my wallet. So I don't have to ever lock myself out. And you can use the spare key on. Anyways, I put it in there. I got like a million hits on it. But because they're thinking, they, were, they thought I was lying. And I thought, that's it. That's really interesting. Why would I make a video lying about how to do this? But it's a, you can hear them crank the car up. They get, no. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so I've, I've experimented around with TikTok and it's been kind of interesting. Um, the idea of like, communicating via apps, Snapchat, any of y'all Snapchat? That really is more of a texting communication application uh, that for young people. And I don't quite get why you want to take a photo and send it to it or draw a picture on it or put an S on it for streaks. I don't understand that, but that's not for me. You know, that's, that's, that's why. Um, the internet will always be there. It's probably gonna get faster and faster. Um, the idea of having a smartphone create content. And I think this is the key one here, thinking short bits of information. Um, our attention spans, I remember I used to go, in, I used to go to plays about 20 minutes into a play, people would start moving around. Uh, and that was kind of like when commercials happen. And now it's, it's, a, it's a little different scenario going on. So I think the idea of thinking short bites, memes, texts, text messages and videos and whatnot are all things that are um, you know, connected with that. Uh, with this generation coming up. And, and, and in some ways, we're starting to think that way. I think uh, most of us are just addicted to our phones as, uh, as young people are, you know. Um, I use it for different things. We're on Facebook. They're not, but uh, one day TikTok won't be cool either. So I don't know what the next thing is. So they'll still be on TikTok. 
I always make jokes at the Snapchat. They're, they're going to be like, here, here's a picture of grandma. And it's like dog ears and a halo. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, so here's a couple of memes here. It's not rocket science. And then I hear it's not music theory, y'all. You know, so many y'all dig music theory. And there's a, why am I wearing sunglasses? I don't even know. And uh, this is, um, I'm a big Star Trek fan. It's like cat talk. I saw that. I thought that was kind of interesting to see how cats would talk. Uh, these are difficult times. I just came from a jazz session and he was doing some really interesting things with, with uh, rhythms and whatnot. And the idea of, of thinking in social media there. So you can see here, um, the university I teach at has all these connections and they put out these, these are some uh, things from uh, some tweets that they put out. And the idea of a compact disc, I used to make the, these discs and now I pay a few dollars and um, I, I, used to, I used something called CD Baby. Any of y'all could do the same thing. And I, I have it on Amazon, um, Pandora, uh, Spotify. And the cool thing, I didn't realize that at the time, because I have, a Spotify, have my music on Spotify, I can use that for my TikTok videos. So that's kind of cool. My, the next album is going to be a lot of instrumentals. So I can use that for specific TikTok videos and whatnot. Um, so anyway, social media and social networking is everywhere. Uh, I, I sometimes they use the term social media networking kind of interchangeably. It's it's a, there's a social media is really a platform for broadcasting this information, and social networking is communicating with a, a, another person. So I guess in some ways Facebook's probably more of a social networking, and social media would be it's more like YouTube or Instagram. So anyway, some things are kind of you know clear, uh, unclear, and the idea of thinking and um, you know, small little parts, I already mentioned that. You know, we used to, as educators, used to compete with television. And if you would have told me as a kid, one day I would never watch television, I would think, you're, 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 I mean, I, I love TV, but now it's completely different. So, um, and of course, there's a lot of different creator sites out there. There's a lot that I don't know as well, but these are the big ones that our students are using. And these are ones that uh, really help out a lot. So a lot of you all are probably um, um, it, it teach elementary, high school, college, and all these, uh, I think YouTube is probably the better one for a lot of aspects because you can edit things with that. Uh, but TikTok is good for short little things. And I'll show you some examples in, in a moment of uh, what works with that as well. Um, Instagram is great for photos, but they have the reels now because they're competing with TikTok. And even YouTube has, has something called shorts now, and that's competing with TikTok as well. So they're all competing against TikTok. Twitter is interesting uh, for getting information out there. And of course, music uh, with Spotify and other, other uh, platforms as well. So let me show, here's a picture of what I set up for the pandemic. Um, uh, this, uh, I have a couple of lights here, I have a light there, I have a light there. I just, I just pulled down a screen as a background. Um, so if you have a, have a screen like for a data projector, uh, then I have my laptop here, and then I have a little keyboard there, and I have a microphone. And I have hooked to a wired connection there. So um, when, when that happened, fortunately, I just had the tech skills to be able to put together a cool looking uh, a system. And what I use at my house, I actually use a camera, not a web camera, I actually use like a DSLR camera I don't use anymore. And, and because it has a better lens to it and it has a better resolution. So when I, when I, when I have my Zoom studio and most of us, most of y'all probably have a Zoom studio still somewhere or something you can set up just because um, hopefully we'll never need it again, but it's just, just there. And I do have microphones and cameras and lot So I was gonna show you some, some little gizmos and, um, let me um, see if I can switch. I'll switch to this little camera over here. There we go. Uh, so I got a couple of, uh, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't get too much, room. I made this turn that down just a touch. Okay, so let's go over a couple of things. One, um, we all seen these type of tripods here, right? And these are kind of cool. And you put your phone in there and whatnot uh, but this this is so much better look at that and if you got uh in your car one of those little magnetic things in your case 
you can bet, get these for ten dollars and just plug in like that and for me that's been a game changer so i don't have to worry about this i can level it any way i need to level it and so that helps out a lot and this little bag i have right here is uh, something i get there's a little remote but um it's a portable lavalier and it doesn't work through bluetooth um now the one thing is i actually had to cut my case a little bit to make it fit but that's okay and um uh, you got an iPhone. They had this for USB. -C. This is the, the Lightning one, but they have it for USB C also. Just put it in there, and then you just turn on the microphone, put it on there, and then it works like up to like sixty feet away. So uh, if you're band director, choir director, or whatever you're trying to do, um, it really has been a game changer. And they're, they're about, I think I paid sixteen dollars for this. Now it doesn't feel like it's going to last forever, but it's economical enough that. Uh, Oh, I just broke it now. Uh, it's it's economical enough that you know if it breaks every semester, it's not so, so, so big of a deal. And so um, that's kind of a cool little piece of technology. And it's, this is kind of one of my rigs. Then if you notice, I got a lot of little lights also that I have. These little portable lights that you can carry on. And lighting is a is a is a pretty important part of um, I think making a, making an interesting looking content. Uh, if you don't have lights, you know, here, well, in film school, we talked about flat light, flat lights right here. Now, if I put a light, if I turn a light on and um, these little ring lights here have gotten to be, I think this was like $12. And then the, I have a stand for something else, but uh, it's not too expensive. And you can just USB, you got one of those little phone chargers, you got, you got juice. And then as you can see, it puts out a pretty good bit of light. Um, you can control the color temperature to match the light in the room. So that, that, that much is pretty good there. And then I can dim it down also. If you notice, it also has a place for a phone. So this, that, that comes with there. And I, these don't cost very much. These are ring lights. The one thing about a ring light, it kind of gives you those little, like since I wear glasses, you can see the little circles. So if you don't wear glasses, don't worry about it. But if you wear glasses, you can use it on the side like that. They kind of give you a little bit of a definition as they call it, make it, uh, make it work. Um, and I got a ton of these lights now. Um, the, the film I talked about earlier, th this was actually a light I used and I have a, um, a gel on it, kind of get some cool colors going on. But, um, you know, and this one doesn't have, um, You can, you can dim it down if you need to. And that's nice. So sometimes you just need a little bit of light. But uh, and you can change the gels on that as well. Um, this is a cool little selfie stick. I like it's a selfie stick, but you can make it into a tripod. So that's kind of nice. I use that for a long time. It has a little remote also if you want to take photos. So this is one I use. I like this one a lot because it has a little mirror on it. <laughs> and uh, that way you can kind of see yourself if you've got it in the, in the because most of the cameras, the the, the camera facing away from you is a better camera. And so, and that's kind of a nice little, uh, so uh, I got lights that use batteries. Those are always nice. This is something um, I played around a lot with sound because sound is so crucial when you make content. And um, this here is, whoops, let me just put that down right here. Um, this is something that's a portable system as a little Sony recorder and you can sync it up. This is what they call a second system. So you would sync this up later on. And the cool thing about this, I can walk a mile away from the camera because it's, it's right next to me. And so um, that's been useful for filmmaking. I think it was like 30, $40. It wasn't too expensive. And this one was uh, actually pretty good. I mean, so good. I actually gave these out to some of my friends and it was like 15 bucks. And this one, plugs into a uh, DSLR. If you still got one of the phones that has a headphone jack, if you don't, if you got those little dongles that will work with that. And uh, the life on this is, the, the battery life is really good for this as well. Actually, I got this one for $8. I don't know why it's marked down to $8, but it, sometimes the economical things actually work out pretty well um, with that. And these are kind of cool lights. You can have a little suction cup and put it on your laptop or put it somewhere where you need it need to put it at. I got a lot of little tripods and things like that um, to be able to make content. So those are the those are the big ones. Now if you don't have any of that fancy stuff, 
you can still use uh, a headphones and, and, and use that as a ability to record as well. Now, the one thing for me uh, that I find is that um, Bluetooth gives a little bit of a, I want to call it a Bluetooth hiss. There's a little bit of a noise factor. I don't know what it is. Um, that's one reason why this particular camera, this one here, because it doesn't work, it doesn't work via Bluetooth. It actually sounds a lot better to me. Uh, but the, all the Bluetooth ones I've tried, I always get a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a hum. And I, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. I guess it's just part of that technology that's there. Um, the one downside with this particular one here is that you have to pull, pull it pull it off to be able to hear if you actually record. And every once in a while, I, I've had something not work right. I have to go back and record it again. So I always check when I use this one. Um, hopefully, it's not mission critical when you do some of those things as well. Uh, one other one I do like to talk about as well, I got it in here, um, is a wired lava layer. Um, and for years, I only use a wired lava layer because of the Bluetooth hiss until this, this one, this new one came out. And uh, the cool thing about these ones here, you can get them, you know, you can see how long the wire is. I, I could walk, you know, halfway over there to y'all and so have a good audio recording. And so for you that are, um, if you're conducting or, or, or in an elementary area, you can use a lot with these wired ones. And these, all this is like 20, this is probably like 20 bucks, 12 bucks. They don't, a lot of this stuff didn't cost a lot. This was, you know, like I said, 12 bucks probably. These were probably, I think I got two in two a pack and they were, you know, 20, 30 bucks. They weren't too expensive. Uh, in film school, lights were very expensive. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't have four lights at all. So now I have my own kit, like light kits, and I, I can film whole short films with, I can film a feature film with this, the, the inexpensive lights I got, because I, light is a light. To me, a light is a light is a light um, in a lot of aspects. And I'll, and I'll just talk about this real briefly, uh, what I call, um, the, the, if you have one light, what I would do is I would set it like this. Okay, you got two lights. I would have one here and one kind of on the side here. So this is a little bit closer, a little bit, not directly in the face, but kind of like that. But I got three lights. I usually do what I call a kicker. I put it in the back and it kind of give me a nice little uh, rim around my head and give it a little bit of definition. Cause that way uh, you have to, you need light to see a wall. So if the wall is not there, uh, you can't get definition of, of, of relationship where you're at. So those are, and a lot of times I have even more lights than that, but those are the, the three lights and those kits aren't too uh, expensive uh, to put together. And I would also think of this, uh, you already have a built-in webcam for most of you that have a laptop and Zoom, the free version of Zoom, allows you to record to your uh, desktop. And so you can do something like this and make content uh, very quickly and very uh, easily. And you can edit stuff on your computer and get it onto your phone. Um, uh, on here, I use the AirDrop, but I'm sure on Android, there's another way of getting uh, information on there. And then you can upload it to whatever you're trying to upload it to. Um, obviously, if you're going to upload it to YouTube, you can just use the computer itself. Um, there's a vintage Commodore 64 there that I used. I mean, I recorded an album uh, just using the Commodore 64 as a sound module, and that was that was really fun. So here's some ideas, and maybe some of y'all can give me some ideas that you would do as well. Uh, uh, make lessons, um, how-to videos, how to uh, tutorials, uh, lesson plans, reminders. Anything else that y'all would think of that you could, that you would like to make as as content for your students? or for other uh, music educators or for other musicians? Oh, a sing-along, that'd be great, yeah. I've done it for substitutes. Yeah, I substitutes. I recorded myself doing a lecture. Mm -hmm. And I think today with Zoom, yeah, I think with Zoom, you could make that relatively easy and just have that ready to go. That's a, that's a great idea. I often think about any content that's what they call evergreen, so you can use it multiple times. And so um, um, you know, I teach history of rock and roll, and the, lately, because I've been Zooming as well, I've been making 
the recording the content of the lecture. So I could potentially use that for other classes if I needed to as well. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of really, those are probably the big ideas that we do and how to make things and uh, create things. So, um, and one thing as well, another, another, another uh, session mentioned is that if you don't know something, one of your students can help you figure it out. Um, <laughs> I probably should hire a student to help me understand Snapchat more. I, I think I understand it. It's just not for. It's just not for me. Instagram, I, I can understand. I'll, I'll take photos. I, then I can understand. TikTok, I, I can understand. It's, it's short videos and whatnot. So this is kind of one of my bigger setups here. Uh, it's a Canon 80D camera. They have a 90D out now, and I use I use a lot of different lenses. I usually 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 use a 24 millimeter lens because it. Uh, this is a crop sensor. It makes it more like a what they call 35 millimeter lens, and it's a it, it it makes it where it's not too close, so I can actually show playing the guitar or whatever I'm, I'm trying to do. Tripods, lights. So I kind of already did a little demo of the the, the gear that I have over here, uh, the lavalier, and that's been a game changer uh, for me in a lot of aspects. But having a, having that good audio that really separates you more than anything else. People will forgive a bad picture, but if they can't hear you, they're going to go on to something else. Um, and if you can do a little bit of everything, and there's no reason why you can't do everything. My other setup, and you kind of already saw that, was is an iPhone, a tripod, LED lights that I can carry around with me in a lavalier. Um, and that one little tripod is kind of what I carry more than anything else. And I one of those little lights in case I need to need something at night as well. Um, and you kind of these these lights here, you kind of see that they're a little, these are a little bit different ones than I had for my Zoom setup. But uh, they work well. I use those a lot for the for the film I was making. Uh, and of course, now the third one is the Zoom setup. And it, basically, we all have this here. If you have, if you have a laptop, some type of wire lavalier. If you notice right here, I have a lavalier uh, connected to the computer. And so uh, this is this is actually the what I when I teach uh, via Zoom uh, or I teach face to face, and I have the Zoom going on. I have this on so that way I can walk away and. I could turn around and there's still good audio. And so the, and this is like 12 bucks. It's not very expensive. And so, um, and uh, so, it, so just get a couple of lights. Usually in the, in the classroom, I don't have a lights. I don't have, I don't really have a place to set it up and someone else is coming in. So I don't really have a set place for that. But um, my, my Zoom studio in my house, I have, have that set up. Um, now, I mean, the webcam audio is, is good. It is good, but it's nice to be able to turn around like that and still be able to have good audio for. Um, and honestly, if I need to like play the piano over there, I could put, put, put it get pretty, pretty close there and still be able to pick it up and uh, pick it up enough where someone can hear it. Uh, software is always interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a Mac person. Um, but iMovie, I've used uh, Premiere, um, Photoshop, Audacity is a free software, GarageBand and Logic. Uh, Logic, GarageBand is basically Logic Lite now. And so if you understand GarageBand, you can kind of understand Logic and vice versa. Um, um, and I've been using iMovie, I think, since the beginning of it. Uh, the new version of Final Cut uh, is basically the same thing. It's iMovie, li iMovie is Final Cut Lite. So if you understand how to use that, so that was, that's kind of nice. Uh, the Premiere software, uh, Photoshop, and again, a lot of these programs you can find um, free alternatives for. I, I know uh, I really made, really made me kind of sad when Adobe went to a um, subscription model uh, because instead of just buying it outright, I have to like pay every month or yearly or whatever. Uh, the iOS, um, there's iMovie on there. I use a program called Splice. It's pretty small and it does a lot of really cool things on it. I use the built-in um, uh, audio, uh, the, sorry, the recorder that comes with the iPhone. And I use that for scratch pads or if I needed to, whatever, it's, it's great to have that for audio as, as well. Uh, I even got like a, the mobile version of Fruity, of FL Studio on here as well so I can make music along with GarageBand and, and whatnot. Um, and on Android, there's a, the Quick is the one that's free. There's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of ones out there as well, but that's the one that I that's a free piece of software that works on the Android relatively uh, well. And you you don't you don't need to go you don't need to have as much gear as I have. I, I like gadgets. I'm a gadget guy. I like gadgets and try things out. And I just buy stuff on the whim like that like that lava layer there. It's like, well, how good could that be for sixteen dollars? Well, it turned out to be 
as good as a $200 uh, model there. I was like, I was shocked. Um, now, I don't know how robust it is. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but uh, I, I do like these uh, gears. The same thing with these lights. They're not, go they're not going to uh, sustain film school because uh, kids drop, because students just drop things all the time. But for me being older and less likely to drop most things, uh, I think they work out all right. Uh, hardware, I kind of talked about a lot of this already. Um, I use everything from the, the inbox mobile pre, I love that. Um, condenser microphones, anyways. Uh, I will talk about the lavaliers as well. And uh, so my Zoom setup, I usually have a, a, a microphone that's this there because it has a has better sound. Um, I think it's a better sound to it. Every once in a while, I don't know if any of y'all have occurred this via Zoom, sometimes things uh, you start getting the echo for the other person. They, they say if they start talking. And the built-in one doesn't do that. So a lot of times I just go to the default one with a webcam. I don't know if it's a Zoom problem or what it is, but it, it, that happens. Um, and, and I know they update things all, all along as well. So this is kind of the some of the some of the equipment I use. And I use I use even more equipment than this is than this. Most of the time now, because things are just busy, I use my phone to make most of the content today. Uh, the cameras have gotten so good, and this is like an eight. You know, I know some of y'all got you know thirteens. The phone, the, the cameras have gotten to be amazing, um, and so you don't really need uh, the the expensive DSLR camera. As a matter of fact, I think Canon said they're not going to make a DSLR anymore. They're going to go to mirrorless only. So uh, uh, the, uh, DSLR, the DSLR revolution is kind of winding down now because of uh, going to the um, mirrorless cameras and whatnot. And I'm kind of sad a little bit because I, I like the DSLR a lot. I like, I like the look of them. I, th I think it is a different look than that. So um, here's a couple of little thumbnails of some of the uh, TikTok things. And again, I'm not a TikTok ex expert. Some of y'all may be a, a lot better than I am. I do know that trying to come up with something catchy on there with, with the uh, with the titles and, and you put these stickers on there of things that are related to and whatnot. So apparently a lot of these, I had a mustache. So my mustache and beard comes and goes. So it just depends on, I kind of like, well, okay, I guess that was that. And uh, some of these, some of these got some decent views. And again, I'm not worried about that. I, I was like really experimenting around what could an educator do uh, with this shorter technology. And a lot of times, you know, if you're doing a fingering, if you do a chord progression, if you do a song, you can sum it up very quickly. And um, I remember in a lot of aspects, when I edit films, um, I don't need to have the person walk through the door. I jump into the scene as, as fast as possible, as late as possible, because it's more interesting for, for the audience. And uh, anyways, and, and also as a teacher, I don't know if any of y'all agree with this or not, the less I teach, usually the more my students get, because they have time to retain, they have time to, to, to you know, Sometimes we forget we know all this music theories and everything or music history, whatever we're teaching. And you know, it took us a lifetime to learn that. We can't get that in one semester or one class. So it just takes a little time with that. Um, so let me show, uh, I won't, I'll, I made a little clip of a couple of things uh, just kind of showing you some video content. Uh, this is mainly for my YouTube stuff. I, I, I got a couple of TikTok ones I can show. I'll kind of fast forward through a couple. I'm not playing. Sorry, I thought do do do. Thought that wire was going on there. Maybe it's not. Hello, can you believe that everything? One interesting. Okay. Anyways, you can kind of see. Thing on this table, oh, so you can now do on. You see that content there. Someone. Show you the thing green. I kind of device for the car. So we're talking about some music theory there. Talking about the five seven chord. And I don't know. If, I love music theory. I don't know if any y'all love music theory. <laughs> love music theory. So right now, I'm outside with. Um, I wish you could hear this one. Live microphone. Because I'm mean, yeah, the cars are going by. Cars are And I'm guessing you can still kind of hear me. At least a lot better than sounds with the built-in audio the right now. Audio. As the cars are going by. So, photography. Anyways, so I'm showing some a little different effects there. Um, that As you see, bit. moving lights around can make a big see difference that. with what I'm trying to do. If I got rid of this here, what do you think? See that big difference with having that light behind me? 
kind of like gives it gives it. I played boogie woogie piano really sloppy. I just have some reason. All those years of piano lessons. I felt really good, but I looked at the job. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. And I thought, well, it's it sounds, new job in this particular one was horrible. It, 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 it sounds really good. Hard, and it sounds amazing. Every once in a while, you find like a, a gem. I do a lot of guitar studies. I write a guitar study every month. And I, I use it. I use it. I was just showing some different lighting examples. Like, kind of a cool look there. This one's a little bit more of a dark look. This one's. A little bit more lit up. That might be too lit up. Some shadows in that one. Light coming in. Light. Really, really Get a different time signature. We'll want to. Uh, this is when I was uh, recording my uh, uh, album with the Commodore 64, and that was a cool challenge to actually feel comfortable enough that I could play um, two-hour set travel that's guitar. That's I want microphone. Uh, and it actually works pretty uh, well. Print up a mouthpiece. Kind of sounds like I printed up a mouse, mouthpiece. And plus, I'm not really much of a player. I had a dent uh, uh, from wood, and one of my friends had put, put a wet cloth and thick iron, and it pulls out the dent of the wood. Man. And I was like, it got to be pretty, pretty good. It was a lot better than still. There's still a little bit there. Man, golly, this is so I was like, really happy. I could Selfie stick that has a tripod, and you're doing a lot of vlogging or uh, another in real life or a uh, tripod I have there. The, the uh, talk so about songwriting. Uh, I'm going to do an intro. Talk about form and how you put a song. Uh, verse, together. chorus, the bridge. I wish I were three. Life. And whatever major, any genre I device. I took a, a jewelry making class and I learned how to make rings. To, to and I thought the uh, 400 to 1000 and completely outside my will box the difference. knowledge. Made a little Christmas with the Nacket Dodge's Christmas. And what I'm doing is. Uh, Using my using my microphone, I love catfish. Uh, uh, use, uh, I use my microphone as a, I'm sorry, use my phone as the click track, and so I would just play the chords along with that, trying to, to sync up with that, and then sync up with it later on when I go in Premiere and whatnot. So um, let me show you one or two this TikTok clips just to kind of. Um, show. I'm going to show you today how to play two chords. So I'm going to show two songs. chords on there. One, you take your first finger, put it on the this first fret of the when first talk string, and you strum the first the three strings. That's a G7 chord. Mm -hmm. The next one, take your first play finger, and put it on the away. second fret of the second uh, string, really and that's and the first three strings, and that's a C chord. So you can play a lot of songs like this. Mary that's actually a my uh, little lamb. Put a tripod up in the way. I don't really like it. It's fleece was white as I like like that. Rock and roll, y'all. So uh bang it up. Whoops. Wrong one. I don't know why I did that anyways. Well, anyways. Maybe I need to put it over here. Not blank one. Well, I guess not. <laughs> Anyways, kind of get the idea with that. Um, so, any any uh, any questions? We're, we're getting, getting close to the kind of the uh, end of the, end of the time together. Uh, any questions from um, from you all? Any uh, anything I can help you out with or uh, thoughts? Anything to help other folks out? So, yes. Uh, are you talking about the, the wireless one? Or are you talking about the, um, honestly, they all look the same. Uh, if you want to come take a picture of it and look at, because there are like five different companies on Amazon that have them. They all look the same. They all look the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. They have more expensive ones. I mean, you can find them for like $60, $80. But that particular one for 20 bucks or 16 bucks, 
uh, worked really well. And uh, if you just type in um, iPhone wireless mic, you'll see you'll see that little shape there and everything. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a great rest of Team A. Go get some dinner now. Act some jacks, y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. I appreciate it, y'all.